Is there anyone who doesn't enjoy watching these satisfying software explainer videos? Well, in this video, I'm putting my own spin on it and showing you step by step how to edit something that feels super satisfying to watch, but also doesn't take hours to create. This tool is built for dirtbags. First, it lets you type in someone's name and, well, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. We have three pricing tiers and the $300 one lets you activate their iPhone camera so you can spy on them. Make sure you leave a comment below on what you guys want to learn next. So really quick, I'm going to show you how I generated that woman's voice that made the edit sound very premium. So as far as I know, Eleven Labs is the best and it's free. As you can see, I have 10,000 credits and all I did was make an account. So make sure you have the Studio 3.0 selected, which is the best. And as for the voice, I selected Jessica. Now all you have to do is type in what you want her to say. And then from there, you can just select Generate Speech. Hello there, buddy. What's up? So now we're in DaVinci Resolve. This is the entire animation here. So we're going to start with this one right here, just because before that is just basically text animations. So I dragged on a Fusion Composition clip onto our timeline here, and then we can go to the Fusion tab. As always, I'm going to start with dragging on a background and then connecting it to the media out. We're going to leave this black for now. I'm going to hit Shift Space and add in a grid node. Now I'm going to increase the column cells. I'm going to drag the major line width down and then I'm going to change the color to kind of a, now I'm just going to slightly increase it till you can barely see the lines, something like that. I'm going to hit shift space and add in a vignette like this. And that's just going to create a mask around it like this. I'm going to drag up the softness. Basically all that does is make the lines disappear around the edges like that. Now I'm going to hit shift space, add in a merge node. So now we're going to make our gradient. So I downloaded this MP4 video of moving colors. It just looks like that. I'm going to have that selected and hit shift space and add in a blur. And then I'm going to increase the blur size just like that. Now we're going to hit the media in one and select the rectangle mask and we can play around with it further now. So I'm going to drag the corner radius all the way up like this. I'm going to drag the height down and then I'm going to drag up the soft edge. Now, if we scroll through, we have a nice gradient overlay. Now I'm going to add in a transform and then I'm going to size it up just a little bit. Now I'm going to select the merge and hit shift space, add in another merge. And I'm just going to quickly create the liquid glass effect. So I'm going to hit shift space and add in a displace node and I'm going to connect it to the green output. I'm going to connect this merge to the yellow output, click the rectangle mask and connect this to the green output. And then this blue output from the merge goes to the rectangle like that. Now with the displace node selected, I'm going to change the offset to minus one. And then with the rectangle selected, we can create our shape. So if we drag in this screenshot, we're creating a shape like this. So I'm going to drag down the height and the width a little bit, and then drag up the corner radius all the way. Now with the displace node selected, we can change the refraction strength to minus four. And then I'm going to drag up the spread slightly, just like that. Now, if we scroll through our timeline to a more colorful point, we can see it a little bit better. Now, something I'm going to do to make this stand out a little bit more is select this merge, hit shift space, add in another merge. Now I'm going to select this media in one, which is the colorful background. I'm going to hit command copy and then paste it here and connect it to this merge. Now I'm going to select this rectangle shape, hit command copy, and then click over here, command paste and connect it to here. Now it's contained in the same shape. So now if we play it, we have something that looks like this, pretty nice. I'm going to quickly animate this jumping in. So on the first frame, I'm going to select the rectangle and I'm going to drag the width all the way down till it's a circle like this. I'm going to keyframe that and I'm going to go over eight frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to increase the size past this other one like that. I'm going to go over seven frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then down a little bit past it like this and then six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, slightly past it, one, two, three, four, five, down, one, two, three, four, and then back to here. We can go ahead and just select this rectangle. Now with this rectangle selected, we can hit the spline. If we select on these boxes, we can smooth out our animation by pressing S. Make sure you select settings and turn on motion blur and turn up the quality just like that. Now we can select this rectangle, hit command copy, and then select over here and paste it. We can delete this rectangle and then connect this rectangle here. So now both of these rectangles are animated. So when we go to the first frame and play it, we have something that looks like that. Now I'm going to select the merge, hit shift space, add in another merge. Now we're going to add in the name here. So 
I'm going to hit shift space and search PJT. These are a bunch of text animations made by the creator PGENT, and I linked them in the description. If you don't want to get them, you can just use this text node here. I'm going to add in one called fall down. So once I connect that, as we can see, the text is already animated very nicely. I'm going to change the font to San Fran Pro Display, and then I'll type in something like Sarah B. Now if we hit shift space and add in a transform, we can size this down like this and place it over here. So as you can see, this text animation starts a little bit soon because the widget isn't even there yet. So what we want to do is go to the spline and drag this animation over a few frames. And so thanks to this comment, I learned that you can simply click the spline. And if you click these three dots and you select show only selected tool, if we go now and select the text, we can go to the spline and now only the animation for this text is showing because we only have the text selected. That is really cool. And I'm pretty retarded for not knowing that. So I'm just going to select all of the animation here. So now I'm just going to go to the frame where this widget appears a little bit more stretched. So maybe frame three, I'm going to drag this text animation to frame three. So now, as you can see, the text animation doesn't start till frame three. So now we have something that looks like that. Now we're going to add the little start button right here. I'm going to select this merge, hit shift space, add in another merge, I'm going to drag in a background just like this and connect it to the merge. I'm going to select the rectangle mask. I'm going to drag down the width and the height, turn the corner radius all the way up. Using the center X and Y position, I'm just going to drag this over to the end. Now with the background selected, I'm going to change the color to something a little bit more bright like this. And then I'm going to turn down the alpha just like this. So now we're going to animate this jumping in as well. So we're gonna to go to the frame where we want it to appear. Maybe frame five, we want it to appear. So I'm gonna select the rectangle and on frame five, drag the width all the way down, keyframe it, and then do the same thing as we did with this widget. So eight frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, drag the width past to where we want it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down. One, two, three, four, five, six, up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down. Again, we're gonna select settings and turn on motion blur and drag that up. We're going to select our rectangle and go to the spline. We're going to make sure everything is smoothed out by pressing S. And now if we go to the first frame and hit play, it jumps in like that. Hit shift space, add in another merge, shift space and search PJT. This time I'm going to use the elastic follower and connect it to this merge. I'm going to write something like start, hit shift space and add in a transform. We can size this down and drag it over top of this. Now again, the lettering starts way too soon. So we're going to go to the frame where we want it to start. So probably about frame five. With the text selected, we're going to go to the spline. I'm going to select all of this and drag it to frame five. Something I'm going to do really quick is on our button here, I'm going to select the background, hit shift space. I'm going to add in an edge detect and I'm just going to select this box. I'm going to turn down the edge width, turn down the brightness and turn up the blur. Now we have a bit of a glow and it looks a little bit better. As you can see, when the mouse touches this button here, it turns pink and then a bunch of more widgets pop up and that's around the halfway point. So I'm going to select the merge, hit shift space and add in another merge. And I'm going to drag in this mouse widget I found. And if we connect that, as you can see, it looks a little bit more 3D. But if we hit shift space and add in a transform, we can size this down and then place it towards the bottom. Now, if we go to the first frame, we're going to keyframe the angle and the X and Y position. I'm going to start the angle like minus 49. I'm going to go to about frame 40 and I'm going to drag this up and over just like this. And then I'm going to put the angle something like that. So now we're going to select settings and turn on motion blur. And then again, with the transform selected, we'll hit the spline. I'm going to turn off the angle and then we can select this and press S and drag this out a little bit. So now it starts fast and as it approaches the button, it slows down. And then for the rest of this animation, we're just going to kind of have it hover there. So I'm going to select this media in, hit shift space and add in a camera shake, turn down the speed and the overall strength. And that way it'll just kind of slowly hover and move. So as this mouse touches the button, we want it to turn a different color. So we're going to find the frame right before it touches. So frame 33, we're going to go to this button, which is right here. And we're going to keyframe the, all the colors. So this top keyframe here, and then we're going to go over two frames, one, two, I'm going to select the color and then we can change it to whatever color we want. 
I think in this case with the gradient, kind of a dark strawberry red matches the best. So like maybe something like that, we can change it later. I'm also gonna have the button increase as it touches. So we're gonna go back to this frame. I'm going to select the rectangle and then I'm going to keyframe the width and the height. And I'm gonna go over two frames, one, two. I'm gonna increase the width and increase the height. Right when this mouse touches the button, we want a second widget to pop out beneath this. I think I'm gonna do a liquid glass widget again. So we can just come over here, select all of this like that, copy it, come over here and paste it. Now holding down shift, clicking and dragging, we can bring it into the timeline, make sure everything's connected and then reconnect everything. Now for the second widget, I don't need it to be as dark. So I'm gonna delete this second one just like this. And now I can select this rectangle here and I can use the center X and Y position and just drag it down. And with the height, I'm gonna also drag it down so it's thinner. Now right now I'm kind of liking this glossy look, but if you want this to be more blurred, hit shift space, add in a blur and connect it in between these two right here. And then we can increase the blur size for however blurry you want it. I might do that later. For now, I'm just gonna turn it all the way off. So as you can see, if we go to the first frame, these appear at the same time and we don't want this to appear until frame 33. So we're gonna go to frame 33. And so now we're going to select this rectangle, which is the animation. I'm going to select the spline. I'm going to select everything like this. And then I'm simply gonna drag this entire animation over to 33. Now, one change I'm gonna make is on the first keyframe of the animation. So right here, we're gonna drag the width all the way down. That way it's invisible until frame 33 and then it pops out. So you guys can actually pick whatever you wanna put inside this. You can find something on motion array, like a loading bar or multiple widgets. In this case, the video I was talking about was kind of like a spy software. So I just wanted to put like a disclaimer before you press start. So in that case, we can just add in a normal text node like this. We can animate it writing out. So I'm gonna select this merge, hit shift space, add in another merge, connect this text node to that merge. I'm gonna change the font to San Fran Pro Display. And then I'm gonna make the font super thin. So I'm gonna go with something like light. So now you can write here whatever you want. So I just wrote out a normal sentence and now we can size this all the way down to how small we want it. I'm also going to select H anchor as this one so that it lines up on this side. And then we can hit shift space and add in a transform and position this where we want the first line to be. So maybe write something like that. So if we go back to our text node, I'm going to come to that spot right here and press enter. And now we can see that we can write more things um, to make it equal. So as you can see, I just wrote a few more things. So that's kind of equal two lines. I'm gonna select the transform and then just drag this down like that. Right on frame 38, I'll have it start. So I'm going to keyframe the right on. Now we can go over however many frames we want the animation to last. So a couple seconds, so maybe frame 80. And then I'm gonna keyframe the right on again. I'm gonna go back to this first keyframe, which is frame 38. And I'm gonna drag this right on all the way down. And so now, as you can see, if we scroll through our timeline, the writing starts and doesn't stop until frame 80. So when this thing comes in, I also added the title of the website, which is trackher.com, which I just made up. So I'm going to select the merge, hit shift space, add in another merge, hit shift space, search PJT. And I'm just gonna add in the fall down animation again, and I'm gonna connect that to the merge. Now I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a transform. And then we can drag this up on top like this and type in the URL, which is trackher.com. The font is going to be San Fran Pro Display. And then I'm going to make it thin. Now we can further kind of adjust where we want it. Now I'm just going to select this text, go to shading. And under properties, I'm going to select gradient. And I'm just going to change this to a darker gray, something like that. And then I'm going to drag this white one like this. So the majority of it is white. So we just have to go to frame 33. And this is where we want the text animation to start. Again, with the text selected, we can select the spline, drag a box over everything like this, and then simply drag it to frame 33. So now, as you can see, when the mouse touches the button, everything comes in at once. So the last thing we need to add when the mouse touches the button is the outer layer, which is another liquid glass layer. So we want it to be behind everything. So it has to be near the front here. So it needs to be in front of the grid, the vignette, and the gradient. So we're just gonna select all of this and drag it back. So I'm just gonna select all of this, which is this widget right here. I'm gonna press Command Copy, and then I'm going to paste it right here. Holding down Shift, we're gonna bring it into the timeline, as well as this one. So now this rectangle, we don't need the animation, so we can just reset the rectangle. 
I'm going to drag up the corner radius and then I'm going to use the center X and Y to drag this down a little bit further like that. So with these displace nodes selected, I'm also going to drag down the spread. We're also just going to keyframe this in. So on frame 33, if we look here and we turn the spread all the way down, everything's disappeared, right? So I'm going to keyframe the spread on frame 33 and I'm going to turn it all the way down. And then I'm going to go over maybe four frames and I'm just going to drag the spread up just like this. So now as you can see, if we go a few frames over, it appears with everything else. So now we can add the final touches to it. If we go to the edit tab, we can go to effects and drag on an adjustment clip. Basically gonna go to the color tab and I'm going to drag up the saturation to like 60. I'm also going to go to resolve FX and search for the fast noise, drag that on, select water surface and turn the contrast down. So it's just very subtle. It just makes everything look a little bit more liquidy. So I'm gonna to go to the frame right before everything appears. So this frame right here, I'm going to keyframe it on the adjustment clip. And then I'm gonna to go to the first frame and zoom in just like this. I'm gonna to go to the keyframes, select this end keyframe here and select ease in. And now it zooms out as that appears. And just before this animation starts here, I'm going to add in another adjustment clip on top of this. And this adjustment clip, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to position it over a little bit like this. I'm going to keyframe it on the first frame of this adjustment clip, go to the last frame, and then I'm going to drag the position over the other way. And then I'm also going to go to the first frame again. And this is kind of the lazy way of doing it. Really, you should convert everything to 3D, but I was just lazy. So I'm just using the pitch slightly up like this and the yaw slightly over like this. So now we're kind of looking at it from an angle and I'm going to keyframe the yaw on the first frame of this adjustment clip, go to the last frame and then bring this back closer to zero. So basically it looks like this. It's basically just the illusion of a second camera angle. So that kind of wraps us up for this tutorial. Everything else is basically built the same. That being said, if you guys want a tutorial on the full breakdown of the animation, let me know down below.